Welcome, Friends of the Rail members, to our fire lighting course. This evening we are going to be lighting up Wendy, the class 15F number 3094 situated behind you. So if you follow these simple rules that we have prepared for you in this handbook held by Gabor, you will see there, <laughs> we will show you how to successfully bring this locomotive, or any other steam locomotive for that matter, into life in a slow and gradual, safe, sound and secure manner. So follow us and let's see how we go about this. Try and examine all the plugs to see that they are intact, that there's none missing. If there's missing, there'll obviously be a lot of water, and if there's any water around these plugs, then there's a sign that it's not secure. Don't do anything again. Thanks by the cab. Yeah. If there's any warning boards, that means somebody is busy working on the locomotive. So you don't do anything. Have a look again at your plugs, washout plugs, and your arch plugs. You see they're situated here. This, these are your arch plugs. There's a couple of them running on the front of the boiler and I'll show you inside the cab as well. You have a look and you see there's no weeping, everything is intact, there's no water dripping out, so this thing is fine. Just as a matter of interest, these are screens to prevent the sparks jumping out on causing cloud fires. So we also examine the ash pan. And while you're looking inside there, if you bring that light closer and light inside, you check that all the operating levers are intact. So if you have a look, there's all those rods going upwards, they operate the rocking grates. This 15F is hand shaken. And you can operate the rods individually. But this ash pan does need a little bit of a raking out to get it clean. Okay, if we have a look down below here. On the light lower down, you'll see where the ash falls out. There's your ash pan slide. The operating lever, you pull that back, the ash will fall out. So you check all these things are there and operational. We'll do a check on that as well. Check your cylinder drain cocks. The rods are connected and operate them to see that they are functioning. Right, open, close. Close now. Open. Right. Okay. That is there, and it is fitted a very important piece. Do you see it mm -hmm. underneath there? That's your smoke box drain plug. That's your external examination to see that it's fitted there. Right. Let's out the cylinder cover. So that's why you must make sure that it is open. And we make sure we've got a chock. Okay. We have a look further look here. Let's have a light it up. In here, everything's connected up. All right. Just another check. Everything, all the rods are there. Okay. We ended this one up again. We just fixed it. Right. So they can start up the injection. So that's, that's enough anyway. Yeah, as long as there's water in the tender, that'll at least get it going. Yeah. Okay. Then what we'll do? Lift that up like that. Okay. Okay. Close the smoke box. Keep it airtight. So if we want to come up two at a time and gather around here, yeah, we'll see what we mean about the smoke box that must be inspected and why. Inside here, yeah, spark arresters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you can see the R plugged up, right? What you must not do is take a hammer and bang on there. You're not to use a hammer at all in a smoke box, okay? If no one's looking, you can give it a whack. But don't do that, okay? You're supposed to take wire brush and clean it. They clean all that stuff out there, okay? And theoretically, there they go. There the spark will have the wire brush. And for the stubborn ones, the stubborn ones, if you've got to bang it, if you've got to bang it, bang on the handles. Okay. Don't bang. It looks easy, it is easy, but you must make double sure of this. In the daytime, when the driver comes in duty, they will again open this to examine the smoke box. While doing fire lighting, you'll notice what they get a term called sweating, when the locomotive actually starts to sweat. What happens is as it warms up, you get condensate in the boiler and it tends to clog. A newly fitted lead plug in the locomotive. This one had been weeping and it's a new one that's been fitted into the crown plate. Safety device. In this locomotive, three of them are fitted. The firebox above the brick arch, you can see all the ash that is collected and has been blocking the small tubes. This should be checked and cleaned out before the fire is lit. 
you have a look at the tube plate, everything looks intact. And the two fusible plugs in the front end are looking good. And so, a railway enthusiast is born. <laughs> Internal examination starting off in the cab. Handbrake must be on. Handbrake is fitted onto the tender. Here it has been put in the on position. Alright. Right. Check that the regulator is properly closed. Right, there you go there. Drifting valve by the driver is closed. When you get to know the controls, that is the drifting valve. All the local have them. This check it is pushed forward and closed. Ejector, injector, lubricator, drifter, etc., etc. The drifting lever we operated down there. This is the spindle for it. See that it's closed, closed off shut, right? The reverser, you can see it's closed off as well. Okay, and in the lubricator. Right. Those are the things that are marked on the 19Ds and 24s. They should be stamped on the spindles. And then if you go around to this side here, blower. See that she's closed. Blower creates the draft in the smoke box end, which creates draft in the fire, and that will slowly enable the heat uh, to be built up and the gases to be extracted. See that the reverser is in mid gear. When the locomotive was stabled on the previous trip, the driver would have stabled it with the reversing gear in mid gear. There's the marker in the center. You see that there's a gauge there. The brake is on, no chance there, and your cylinder drain cocks at the bottom. Are operational, we checked that earlier on, and that they are open. This here is the sanding gear. This is your cylinder drain cock. Notice down there while we're about it that lever that is the driver's side water valve <coughs> for the injector, and here is the operating lever, the steam operating lever. On the driver's side, the fireman side has got exactly the same thing. Right. When you enter the locomotive cab, have a look at the water level in the boiler. You'll see here, you can see a mark, the glass is three quarter full. There you see the water bobbing around there. Way to just double check on yourself. You can open the test cock. There you see she's moving out. We should be draining the water out. Close it off and she'll bob up and down. This is your steam cock and your water cock. Safety device. If you ever take off this protector glass from the gauge column, you must always close off both of those and open your drain cock. So the water will go through. So there's nothing inside here. Now just a tip. For these locomotives, for your own safety's sake, always check that they're operational. It makes it easy in case the glass should burst. And the best way to um, to stable the yeah, the water running up, possibly like that. And why do I say like that? If the thing does burst, there's a lot of steam and glass and all sorts of funny things in the cab. Then you race down and you grab your drop grate handle. Pass me that drop grate handle. And while the steam is blasting in your face, you can get to it from arm's length and you can at least knock it up to close it off. And you can get down here and close it off. And then you're okay. If it was the other way around, like a lot of engines of it up there, you would battle to get that closed off. So do yourself a favor. If you can't get this one down because of various pipes, at least you've got that steam you can shut off because the steam is the one that's going to do the cooking. So you check that there's water in the boiler, three quarters to half. On a warm locomotive, you can go half to a quarter. And then you just give it that test. All right, four feed lubricators. This one here is for the mechanical stoker. They have a fifth feed. But the normal 24, 15 stairs only got four, which go to the cylinders and the valves. These are the feeds, and hence shutting it off up top there. So that when it comes to full this, you don't get hot water splashing in your face. I'm inside again, we've got the water valve, we've got the steam valve or cellar valve to operate the injectors and this other lever down here is the cooler, cooler for the ash pan. You must see that it's coupled up when cleaning fire that operates the ash pan coolers which does the ash inside the firebox. Down here we have the ash pan slide, the 
the ash pan is now open, the ash pan is closed. You must check that that is working. And underneath this cover plate here, we have the various pegs. This is your drop grate. The drop grate is when you clean fire, it opens one of the grates which lets the fire drop out. So you must test that it's operational because if there's a problem and you have to throw the fire out, you must know how to work it. If you look down here, there's a little peg which lifts up and then the grate will go forward. And if you look inside the firebox now, guys will see us see that the firebox is clean. There is no rubbish. Give them all a shake, they're all operational. Yes, to throw a fire and spread the coal around the whole of the firebox. A thin bed of coal has been spread over the firebox and now we start stacking the wood right up towards the tube plate under the brick arch is the best position for it. So let's stop filling her up. Okay, we have some paraffin in these legs. One of the things you can do to just speed things up a bit, sprinkle lightly a dash of paraffin, A grade, onto the wood. It will soak in and burn much better when it's inside. We're going to take our old waste into this bucket, plastic bucket. Open your can of paraffin. You can use diesel or paraffin. Paraffin probably a bit better to use and cheaper. Give it a swirl, mix it up nicely. Make sure, yes, that you've got the right consistency on your cotton waste. When you squeeze it, there's no runoff of paraffin. And then what you can do to cheat a bit is to put some thrown inside there already in advance. So when your match goes in, it's already there. Right, let's another little Dosing of that. Mm. La la. And a couple of oh, flunkies. Mm. And if you want to have a look, see inside before we. Oh dear. <laughs> Fire lighters, are you ready? Hey, does this water or paraffin? <laughs> I'll kick your ass if this was paraffin or water. <laughs> oh well, it doesn't help if you don't get it spot on in the middle, but there we go. fire will burn, it will slowly ignite the coals and start spreading. And you add a little bit of coal at a time, let it burn through, the fire should start spread. Eventually you can put the long rake in, start raking it back till you get a fire all over the fire box. Thank when you. the steam pressure starts getting towards 50 pounds on the gauge there, it will take quite some time, you can then open the blower very slightly. When you open the blower slightly, you're going to get a bit of a draft on the fire, it will get the smoke out of the cap, it will start burning properly. But as the pressure goes up, you've got to turn the blower down. Because the more pressure, the faster the blower is going to go. So as soon as he's on to about 50, but not before. Best to let it warm up in a slow, gradual way. One way to check for warming up, use the back of your hand. Not the front of your hand, because there's nothing worse than a blister on the front of your hand. And you can't hold the shovel. Take the back of your hand, and you can feel the plugs. Just touch them. Right. Getting on. But if you did that, and it was boiling hot, then you've got to stoke on a long journey. You're not going to be able to do it. So use the back of your hand. So let's see what's.
worm yeah. of a mince machine. And it goes up here. But what happens, because it turns to the right, you tend to get more coal thrown to the right or to the left, whichever, but mostly to the right. So what the fireman does, he opens up and he puts a peg in here. That guards more coal to the side. If he wants more coal, too much coal in the center, that will give it equal to both sides. Too much to the right, drop a peg in there. And it will throw more coal to the side. And these on the side are your veins. They call them veins, or we call them word in Afrikaans. You'll see inside here, there's one, there's two, operated by that. And that adjusts how the coal falls onto the table and how the steam blows it. So if there's too much coal going in the back corner, you can either cut down on your jets or you turn the veins in. These over here, and it'll guide it away from the back corner there. So they should be set at 10 to 2. If you looked at a watch, 10 to 2, but that's more like 10 to 1. So obviously this guy on the last trip was throwing too much coal in the back. So when you get your journey started, set it at 10 to 2. If it doesn't move, turn it up and give it a clap with a hammer and shoot the pin up. And then you work on your stoker jet. Thank you.